Let me start with something that grabs your attention right away. Because this isn't a trick, and it isn't some recycled backyard gimmick. This is a method pulled straight out of early 20th century field manuals, the kind used by explorers, homesteaders, railway workers and soldiers who didn't have the luxury of electricity or spare fuel. They relied on lanterns the same way we rely on phone flashlights, and when fuel was scarce, they had to make it last. What you're about to learn is the exact technique they used to stretch a single lantern fill into a continuous 30-hour burn without sacrificing brightness. This wasn't a novelty. It was a survival requirement. And the fact that it still works perfectly today is proof that the old ways were built on practical experience, not theory. What makes this hack so interesting is that it's not complicated, it doesn't require exotic materials, and most importantly, it shows how people a century ago solve problems with a level of resourcefulness that we rarely see today. If you're watching this channel, you're probably like me. You want to understand not only how something worked, but why it worked and why it stuck around in the historical record. So let's break it down properly and get straight to the parts that matter. Let's start with the principle behind the extended burn. Old lanterns, particularly the classic kerosene hurricane lanterns, relied on capillary action. The wick pulls the fuel upward, vaporizes it, and burns the vapour, not the liquid. The longer the wick is exposed, and the larger the flame, the faster the fuel disappears. So the question pioneers had was simple. How do you maintain a usable flame without draining the reservoir too quickly? Their answer was a method known in early manuals as wick throttling combined with controlled draught. Today, we'd call it restricting air intake and reducing wick exposure. It sounds basic, but when done correctly, it changes the lantern's entire fuel consumption profile. They discovered that lowering the wick by just a few millimetres and reducing the oxygen entering the lantern allowed the flame to stabilise into a slow, even burn. Instead of the fuel vaporising aggressively, it vaporises steadily, giving you long endurance at almost the same illumination. You can apply this directly with any standard kerosene hurricane lantern, old or new. The key is finding the wick height, where the flame is clean but restrained. Raise the wick until you see the flame widen, then lower it until the orange tips disappear. At that point, the lantern is burning fuel at its minimum efficient rate. The second part of the hack uses heat recycling inside the lantern. This is where the 100-year-old trick becomes interesting. Lantern designs from the 1910s to the 1940s included a subtle feature many modern users overlook. The globe shape wasn't just aesthetic. When the airflow is restricted slightly using the side shutters or vents, heat builds up around the burner assembly. That extra warmth improves vaporization efficiency meaning the flame burns brighter on less fuel. Those old-world lantern makers were craftsmen. They understood how to guide heat without wasting it. You can do the same thing today by adjusting the top vents. Close them partially, not all the way, to increase internal temperature. The moment the globe fogs, you've gone too far. Back it off until the glass clears. That controlled environment is where long-duration burns happen, and it's the exact zone that lantern manuals from a century ago described as the economy setting. 
In real outdoor conditions, cold wind, frost or rain, this technique becomes even more important. A modern camper often cranks a flame higher because cold air steals heat. Old World Lantern users did the opposite. They used the vent restriction method to trap more heat inside, allowing the lantern to maintain brightness without using more kerosene. That's why 30-hour burns were possible even in winter camps. The third step involves the wick itself, and this is usually the part people miss. Early homesteaders conditioned their wicks with a slow pre-burn. Instead of filling a lantern and lighting it immediately, they soaked the wick in fuel separately for an hour. This allowed it to saturate fully from top to bottom. A fully conditioned wick draws fuel more efficiently and more evenly, meaning you avoid flare-ups, wasted vapour and wick charring. When a wick chars unevenly, it forces you to raise it higher to get light, which burns more fuel. Conditioning stops that problem before it starts. If you want to replicate this properly, soak the wick in a small dish of kerosene until it turns uniformly dark. Then just wipe the excess, install it, and run the lantern on its lowest clean setting for about 15 minutes. This settles the burn pattern and primes it for long use. It's not ceremonial. It actually prevents uneven burning and reduces consumption noticeably. Here's how all three tricks combine into the full 30-hour endurance method. Set your wick height to the clean burn threshold. Partially restrict airflow at the top vents to recycle heat. Condition your wick before long burns. When you do these together, the lantern naturally shifts into what early users called its economy flame. They use this during night watches, rail inspections, farmhouse chores and long overland treks. And for anyone practicing survival today, this method turns a single fill of fuel into a reliable overnight and beyond source of light. A practical survival example. During a power outage, running a lantern at full brightness drains your fuel supply in six to ten hours. With the old-fashioned method, that same lantern quietly burns through the night and well into the next day. For preppers, hikers, or off-grid homesteaders, that difference is enormous. If you found this useful, make sure you subscribe to Warfield Survival, share this guide with a friend, and help keep these forgotten skills alive.